In this video, I want to discuss a little bit of an advanced topic, a little bit of something that's going to come with trading a lot, and it's going to come with a lot of patience, and probably it's going to take you months, maybe maybe even years to develop this intuition, but I want to, I want to get it out there anyways. So in this video, I want to talk about making good guesses as to whether the market is going to reverse at a level or it's going to trade through a level. So I want to talk about um, when when you expect that the market is going to make a new high, it's going to make a new low, or you've seen that the market's going to make a new high, it's going to make a new low. Um, how how can you take a good guess as to whether, okay, is the market going to reject that new high and turn back around, or is it going to reject before it even makes a new high and turn back around, or vice versa, or are we going to trade through it? So. I'm just going to give you a couple different price signatures to start with where you can take a good guess. All right, the market's probably going to trade through that. The first price signature that I want to talk about is going to be multiple highs or multiple lows basically at the same location. So what do I mean by that? When you see that the market, for example, here or here, when the market has highs or lows that are that are at the same exact price, multiple highs or multiple lows at, at the same same exact price um, or or very close prices. Uh, you can you can have a good a good feeling in your mind. All right, market's probably going to trade through that. Why? Because the market's attracted to liquidity, and when the market finally does make a sizable move, it is likely just going to trade right through that liquidity. So, for example, you can see in the two orange bands here, I've highlighted where there were multiple highs in the same exact price. And you can see that the market just traded right through it, okay? And it ended up turning around at an inefficiency later on. When you see flat highs or flat lows all around the same exact price point, more likely than not, the market's going to trade just right, just right through that, okay? That's because the market is attracted to liquidity. It attacks liquidity. It goes after stops. That's what it does. So let's see if we can find some more examples of that. So we had two lows here. You can see that the market traded through it, bounced around a bit, and then traded through those lows again. So we had three lows right around the same spot. So what does the market do? It trades through that. So whenever you have flat highs, flat lows, you would traditionally call these double tops, double bottoms, triple bottoms, triple tops. The market's going to probably trade through that. Okay, Probably just going to trade through that. It's not going to turn around there. That, that's the first price signature that you should look out for. Guys, they're all over the place, like right here, right here, right here, although it did end up turning around pretty close to there, but you can see we got a little bit of trading through that. Market is very unlikely to turn around where you have multiple highs or multiple lows right at the same exact price point. So if you see flat highs or you see flat lows, assume that on the next pass, the market is probably going to trade through that. Okay. So that's the flat highs or the flat lows. Now, let's see if I can find some examples. The market, more often than not, is going to trade through an area of inefficient price delivery and just trade up and through it, okay, and not stop. More likely than not, not always. So we have a fair value gap here. You can see that the market did not turn around there. Instead, it turned into an inverted fair value gap, and it went higher, okay? We see the same thing here. Okay. Market did not turn around at this at this fair value gap. It traded through it and traded higher. You're going to see examples of this all the time where either you're dealing with a long wick or you're dealing with a fair value gap. And especially if you have liquidity, like a multiple highs or lows or a single high or low that's right above the fair value gap, right below the fair value gap, you can rest assured probably the market's just going to trade through that. Okay, It's not going to turn around usually at an inefficient price delivery. Uh, it's it's going to end up going to some like the next level, okay? So, oftentimes if you have these fair value gaps, notice that the market comes back, trades through it, okay? If you see an inefficient price delivery, the market more likely than not, but not always, but more likely than not, is just going to trade right through that, okay? So, 
where you have multiple highs or multiple lows in the same location or like really close to one another, you can rest assured the market's probably going to trade through that. Where you have uh, a long wick or an inefficient price delivery, the market is more likely than not going to trade through that. Where does the market typically find a reversal point? So usually it's going to be multiple levels below wherever you think. So for example, we had an inefficient price delivery here. Notice that when the market came back through it, it traded through it. Where did it eventually turn around? The next fair value gap down here. Okay, that's where it actually turned around. All right, so the market will typically trade through an inefficient price delivery and after it trades above that inefficient price delivery, that's where you start to look for some, some sort of reversal, some sort of entry next. So you get a fair value gap entry here where you can actually enter. Um, but expect it to go further than you think. You always want to expect that the market is gonna go further than whatever you think. And it's probably gonna take longer than what you think. It's gonna take longer to reverse than what you think. It's gonna go further than what you think. Only then is it actually going to reverse, usually. It doesn't usually just turn around on a dime, not usually. Okay, but notice here, again, we had flat highs, right? Well, you know the market. I mean, it's just gonna just rip right through that. You see how it just ripped through it? Yeah, flat highs like that, do not expect the market to turn around at flat highs. Expect the market to rip through that. Okay, we had, we had flat highs here. Notice the market rips through that. And then we end up having a reversal, trade back up to the consequent encroachment of a wick here. And that's finally where the market made a complex reversal and, and went and attacked sell side. But notice that it took a lot longer than you probably thought to actually make the real reversal. It took a lot longer and a lot more complexity. That's typically what the market does. It, it doesn't give you what you want usually right away. It just takes time. So, guys, in conclusion, where do you expect that the market is going to trade through? Multiple highs or multiple lows at the same exact price or at very close price points. You expect the market not to turn around there. You expect the market to rip through that. If you have an inefficient price delivery, like a long wick, oftentimes you should expect that the market's going to trade through that. Um, reversals typically... Uh, are going to be longer and more complex than whatever you're initially thinking. Okay, even if you get the right entry the first time, the market's usually going to come back and test that, then actually go to where you want. All right, like here, for example, you had a good entry at your consequent encroachment of that wick right there, but notice that the market came up and challenged you, and then it actually reversed. Okay. That's what the market does. It's gonna. It's not always going to make things easy for you. It's going to come up and challenge your entry probably multiple times before it actually goes where you want it to go. All right, that's the market's designed to do that. It's not going to make things easy for you most of the time. Okay, um, usually, guys, and this is a little bit of an advanced topic. I get that most of the time, from what from my experience, Market's going to go further than what you initially think. It's going to go to the next PD array or the next level than what you think. It's going to take longer to reverse than what you think. It's going to be more complex of a reversal than what you want. Um, and that's where a lot of patience and discipline and entering in at good levels so that you feel safe in your position and holding them for a long time, that's where they come in. That's where those concepts come in. Um, but notice like here, for example, the market reversed right there at the consequent encroachment of that wick. It didn't reverse at these highs. It didn't reverse at the inverse of that wick. It actually reversed on three pushes up. up. Usually, guys, that's what it's going to take. Usually, it's going to take multiple pushes for the market to actually reverse. It's not just going to do it on a dime. Um, so, anyways, in this video, I wanted to cover a little bit of a intuition, a little bit of a, of a feel topic, um, where you start. So if you're using limit orders, if you're trying to limit the amount of trading that you're doing, so you're entering in on limit orders, uh, I'm trying to help you improve your accuracy and your strike rate. And how, and how I'm doing that is I'm telling you, 
Uh, expect the market to go further than what you think. Expect the market to trade through multiple levels before it actually reverses. Expect reversals to be complex and to take time. Don't expect them to just happen on a dime. They usually don't. They usually uh, require multiple tests before they actually do what you want them to do. Not always, but a lot of the time. Expect that the market, when you have multiple highs, uh, in the, you know multiple highs or lows in the same exact spot, expect the market to just rip through that. Do not expect the market to turn around at double bottoms, triple bottoms. Don't expect the market to turn there. Expect the market to drive through that liquidity and then make a reversal pattern. Okay, um, and and that's basically what I what I have for you guys. Um, by the way, another. Another kind of uh, kind of a feel or or something that you will develop over time. If you're trying to get in limit orders, if you're trying to get in the best the best sort of uh, the best sort of entries, they're going to happen like that. If the market is sitting in kind of the same spot for a long time, it's probably not where it's going to reverse. The market, in terms of like the time that it spends actually giving you the opportunity to be in a good entry, very small, very small, okay? So like these candles are just printing, you know, open, high, low, and close, and they're not telling you the mark-to-market fluctuations. Like if you're in an hourly candle, it's just showing you the OHLC for literally that hour. It's not telling you how the market actually, you know, it could make the whole movement in the last minute of the 60 minutes, the opportunity that the market, so for example, you know, where are some of your best entries? If you're looking down here, you're looking up here, you're looking right there, or you're looking here, how long is the market actually giving you the opportunity to get in these, to get in these good uh, entries? Usually, you gotta be in it on a limit and you have to have that order set in for a long time. Okay, you gotta see it well in advance, you gotta be on a limit order and the market's just gonna come and trade, it's like that. If you feel like the market is hanging around the same spot for a long time, it's probably not the right time to enter. That's just a general feeling that I've gar garnered over time. The market does not make it easy on you, all right? You, if you want to get entries where you're consistently making returns, you know, you're, you're buying towards the bottom, you're selling towards the top, you've got to expect that out of like, let's say, a four-hour period, your window of opportunity for when the market is actually going to give you that crisp, clean entry, maybe five minutes maybe five minutes. If it's an hour long candle and you're looking to get in at the best entry, maybe a minute, maybe two minutes. A very small fraction. Okay, you basically got to be in on a limit order and that limit order has got to be in the market usually for a long time. Okay, so you want to become a profitable trader, you got to learn how the market actually works and the market's not designed for you to make money as a day trader. It's designed basically to bring investors over a long period of time uh, small returns. Basically, that's that's it. Okay, it's not really designed for day trading. Um, and so, if you want to make money as a day trader, you got to know how difficult this actually is. It's very difficult, and uh, the market's going to go further than what you think. Usually, it's going to go further than what you think. It's going to do it during odd or difficult times. So, oftentimes, the market's going to make those moves where you can get a pristine entry. It's going to do it during economic releases. It's going to do it right on the market close, right where your funded account challenges are like you need to be out of the market. That's oftentimes where the market's actually going to make a great entry for you. It's going to do it right at the open of the New York Stock Exchange. It's going to do it an hour before the New York Stock Exchange when you're asleep. It's not going to make it easy on you. It's going to do it overnight in the pre-market. Like It's going to make a higher low that would be a great entry for you. It's going to do it like 5 a.m. Okay. You just have to expect that making money at this game is not easy, and the market's not going to make it easy on you. It's not going to spend much time at those highs or lows, these illiquid price points. It's not going to spend much time there at all. It's going to spend as a fraction, uh, uh, volume profile people would call this like low volume nodes. ICT traders would call these PD arrays. It's not going to spend much time at these PD array entries, guys. It's going to spend a very small fraction of the time there. Your best entries basically have to be in on limit orders, they, and your limit orders have to be in the market for a long period of time. And then, guys, expect that you're, uh, you you need to to expect that the market is going to make things difficult on you. It's not going to be easy. Um, you got to be in on a limit order a lot of the times, and it, and you got to expect that your orders sometimes are going to get filled like at very odd times. Like if you're trying to get filled at these best orders. 
they're going to get filled in, like I said. They're going to get filled in on economic releases where you're like, damn, I don't really want to be playing this, but here I am. Okay? They're going to fill you at the like New York Stock Exchange close where your funded account company challenge is like, well, you need to be out of the market. Well, sometimes the market is going to make a, a higher low 30 minutes after the stock exchange closes because that's earnings season and that's, that's when earnings come out and you're going to have like the NASDAQ make a rip 30 minutes after the stock exchange closes and guess what? Your funded account company challenges, they're going to be like, well, you can't be in the market. So guess what? you got to have enough cash to trade your own brokerage account and, and you need to actually be in, in the market at these odd times. The market might come in and fill your order at 5 a.m., 6 a.m., like in the pre-market a couple hours before the stock exchange opens. That's where the market tends to make these extremes. It doesn't tend to do it, you know, at those comfortable times for you during the workday. Not typically. That's not typically what happens. It's going to do it at very odd times, and it's going to be very fast. It's going to be like an illiquid push up or an illiquid push down. And if you want to be filled in at those great entries, understand that it's probably going to happen at an odd time. Your order, your your position's probably going to be challenged a couple times. Meaning the market's going to come back up, test you, see if you know you have paper hands or not, then it's actually going to go and turn. It's just how the market plays. So don't get into this game thinking that it's easy. It's not. Uh, don't get into this game thinking that, you know, the market is designed for you to make money day trading. It's not. Uh, don't get in. It's, it's designed for investors, basically. Don't get in thinking that the market's going to make highs or lows where you would have a great entry. Don't expect it to happen at normal times of the day, like normal business hours. Don't expect that. Expect it to happen at odd times. Stock exchange closes, economic releases, New York Stock Exchange open, pre-market, overnight. That's when you should expect these great entries to, to, to occur most of the time. Um, so so that, that's generally, you know, learning to curb your expectations and learning to understand, like, how the market really works. Uh, and, guys, these open high-low candles, you should be back testing and you should be studying where... Uh, where the market is making these highs or lows where your where your entries need to be. Um, but understand that the time that the market actually spends down here relative to the candle, like if it's an hour long candle, like I said before, I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm trying to I'm trying to instill it in you. If it's an hour long candle, your window of opportunity to actually enter in it might last five seconds. It might last a minute. If your if your candle is a four hour entry, five minutes. That's it. That's all the market's going to actually give you time to enter in at a high or low where you really want to be entered. That's it. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very fast. And if you're not in on a limit order, you're, not, you're just not going to be in where, you, where optimal entry would be. So, okay, guys, in this video, I talked about you know, setting your expectations about where you would expect the market to trade through something and where you would expect it to reverse. I talked about how the market usually goes further than whatever you think. It's just going to go further than wherever you think. Usually the market's going to come and challenge your position. I mean, it's going to come back. It's going to test you. And usually the market's going to make its highs or lows or its extremes where you really want to be in the market. It's going to do that at very odd times, usually. Not always, but a lot of the time. So, okay, guys. In this video, I talked about expectations. Bye-bye.